What is up everybody, it's your Coffee Addicted Gamer Dr. Jizz here bringing you a normal commentary, but not that normal, because I'm going to break down a new game for you that just came out this Tuesday, and it is 5.40 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Pacific Standard, Pacific Standard Time right now, and I am very tired. I've been, uh, from standing in line at the GameStop with my friends, this has been up for like 8 hours or something like that, so... It's, I'm really tired, so forgive me if I'm not my energetic, normal self doing this commentary, but I hope the content's a little entertaining for you, and maybe you know whether to get this game or not. So, Crisis 2, it's a new shooter out there on the market, just came out, and it's not your typical run-and-gun FPS, let me get that out of the way right now. This is a tactical shooter, and I'll get into that a little later on what I mean exactly, but... This is, um, it's pretty fun off the back, just going to throw that out there, but if you played the demo, a lot of things have changed. Well, enough things have changed. First of all, your killstreaks, they used to be holding down the Y button when you acquired your killstreaks. That has changed to the uh, Call of Duty-like standard of right on the D-pad, which is a nice feature because while playing the demo, I would, out of just mo uh, muscle reflex, I would hit the D-pad on my killstreaks, which would then have a grenade in my hand, which would end up me getting shot and not knowing what the fuck just happened because I'm sitting there bum fucked and outstandingly retarded. But so kill streaks, that is a good switch right there on their part. I really like that. Um, another new change is there is no silencer attachment for the scar or any assault rifle. So they took that out, which is pretty good on their part because otherwise everyone would run around with a reflex sight and silencer poning people for days in the silence not showing up on radar which by the way the radar map sucks ass just gonna throw it out there now so I like that they did that you can still get a silencer on a submachine gun so have fun with that once you unlock that at level 13 is when you get the first one the weapons have about the same recoil on the demo which is no recoil you can basically full out of this thing long range and you won't get any recoil until the uh clip is nearing the end of its life expectancy and then the gun will start to kick up on the sights but if you just burst fire um, the scar or an assault rifle or any other gun um, long range you'll get the accuracy and lethality that you're looking for in the weapon so just like any other game burst fire your gun and you'll be good when it goes to full auto now for people watching this that think maybe I want to get this game this game looks pretty good um, I'm gonna say this now if you like Halo those type of shooters you might like this game more than a Call of Duty hardcore fanboy, I would say, because you've got the invisibility or stealth ability on your right bumper, and then you've got your um, armor on the left bumper, which is the equivalent to, of course, overshield and camouflage in Halo in the Halo genre of games. So people like that might like it. Also, you've got the low no gravity jump, which is holding down A and jumping. <coughs> excuse me to use your energy to jump great heights you couldn't normally do and also climb on things. So like I said, this isn't a run and gun shooter. If you're running gun in this game, you're probably going to get your shit pushed in and shot in the back more than likely. This is a tactical shooter. And what that means is you're going to need knowledge, map knowledge, um, tactics to uh, prevail over your enemy and just not only that, but stay alive longer. It's harder to do that. But if you just pay attention and know what you're doing it should be pretty easy for example a tactical thing to do would be you're getting shot you throw your armor on you survive the bullet you're being taken then you throw on camo and run away to a safe area to recover your health that's a good tactic to use because he doesn't know where you are at that point and he cannot see you that's the difference between a tactical shooter and a running gunner where if they see you in call of duty you're dead in two bullets whereas this game there are many options you can approach this scenario to uh, survive or even kill your opponent like I did right there. Uh, one thing about this game is you probably, when starting out, we get shot in the back a lot. I don't know what the thing is. I think it's because people throw an invinci uh, invisibility and camouflage. You walk by them, you don't see them, they do a double take, turn around and shoot you in the back. Almost the majority of the time, if you're taking out an opponent, you're probably going to get shot in the back. So that's why I say it's if it's life or death you kill that guy I would hit my back to the wall immediately and try to look for someone around there because they do not run alone it's very rare they run in packs so keep aware on that one playing this game <coughs> excuse me like I was saying earlier the radar isn't that great if you look in the bottom left hand corner it looks like a game of Pac-Man from like the 1980s it's not that great um it, I really rarely look down and use it. I use it as reference points to see if there's like a building or an access point I can get to, but really it's not that helpful. 
even when they throw when your team or yourself throws up a radar to help pinpoint them even then it's uh very dodgy because you there's different emblems for representing the enemy and it's not really that great so really just you can sound whore pretty well so use that use your eyes your ears i wouldn't rely on that radar too well because it lies to you a lot of the time and it'll probably get you killed staring at it more than it will help you and that's a bullshit death right there. I punched that guy and shot him. So, hope you just saw that. The kill streaks in this game, if you haven't played the demo or the beta and you don't know what I'm talking about, the kill streaks in this game aren't kill streaks. Well, they are kill streaks. You have to kill people to get the opportunity to acquire these streaks. You kill somebody and they drop a dog tag, which is, of course, you know, standard military. They drop a dog tag. You have to then run onto their body and acquire that dog tag and in sequences of three, five, and seven dog tags, that is what you unlock, which is UAV or the five and sevens rotate off depending on the map. But you can get the highest is a seventh, which is a Ceph airstrike or a um, maximum nano suit, I believe it is, which they are great once you acquire them and they take them a while to get rid of them. The nano suit you can't even really get rid of, you're just a, a god at that point in the game right there, but they can shoot the Ceph out of the sky. So, and this really does, it prevents camping, and that's what the whole point of it was, to get people out of a sitting duck corner and run to go get those dog tags so they can get the kill streaks they deserve. But, um, really, on a good player, it really hurts people that are good and actually use tactic and knowledge and gun skill to win because that player that's smarter knows how to get that kill in a certain way, not by camping, but just using pure map knowledge and then you're forcing that smarter player to do something idiotic and stupid that a eight-year-old can do which is retardedly run across the map and try to acquire this glowing dog tag which by the way they don't always show up and glow and you're there searching in a bush for 15 minutes for a dog tag just so you can get a damn UAV it's just I really don't like the dog tag method which is why there's a perk called I believe retriever you get it like um when you get one of your suit armor up to 16 which is a different you have three levels of um, three level levels of your suit and once you get that one to six you can unlock this perk which is you acquire the dog tags immediately after killing them so you don't have to go run around retrieving, retrieving them like a uh, Doberman Pinscher so I really recommend when that perk you get that perk you buy that immediately because I don't know how many times I've died trying to retrieve a stupid fucking dog tag. It's gotten to the point where if they're not in five feet, I'm not going to do for it. I'd rather keep my kills high and my deaths low rather than trying to slide over and majestically jump through the air 50 feet and get this dog tag, which won't lead to anything great. Yeah. Usually you end up dying more times than not, so dog tags aren't that great, but now you know how it works and why you're sitting there getting kills and wondering, why don't I have a UAV or a SEP? It's because you have to run in and acquire the dog tags off their corpses. So yeah, right now if you hop on, <coughs> excuse me, if you're getting this game, and I don't know if you're watching this in the early morning, maybe you're deciding to get this later, but currently right now a lot of the European people are pulling host and uh, playing this game obviously because they get it before um, due to the time zones, and that's not really that great. I mean, Regarding lag, the game plays just fine if you have a red bar or a two bar or anything like that. It plays fine. There's no frame rates like in Call of Duty dropping. It looks great. The game looks beautiful uh, on the Crytek Engine 3. So there's nothing wrong there. But if you do, say, get killed by a four bar, four bar and you wonder what the fuck, what just happened there, that's going to happen a lot. You're going to have a lot of WTF moments being killed by random things and like, how the fuck did he headshot me there? Because obviously he's got that connection advantage over you, but the game still plays. There's no BS. I'm hopping through 15 walls right now and getting owned across the map. There's none of that. The game plays smoothly and it's just fine. Just it's gonna take a lot. It's gonna take a few more bullets to kill them, and you're probably gonna get killed in a bullshit way that might aggravate you a little bit. Now a little bit more about the suit and the guns and whatnot. The guns, hmm, they've got. They've got multiple tiers of attachments. You've got like your sights, your scopes, your underbarrels, and then certain things. I forget what the category is called, but you've got your um, category where there's extended mags and under. It's not underbarrels, but you've got grenade launcher and a gauze, which is like this electromagnetic thing that insta kills you if it hits you. And I've been killed by it off spawn multiple times, so hopefully that doesn't turn into the uh, Call of Duty equi equivalent of a uh, noob tube off spawn because it is very fucking annoying. But your suit has a uh, 
They're the equi the equivalent to Call of Duty perks is mod suit modules. You've got three ATs. You've got your armor, your power, and your stealth. I converted those in a different order. But yeah, they've each got their special module, which does a certain thing, obviously. And I'm sounding like a rambling idiot right now. But each one has a certain assessment. That's what they're calling crisis. But it's the same thing as a challenge in Call of Duty. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a lot of Call of Duty comparisons because obviously that's the benchmark right now. And if you don't like it, then obviously you're a Halo fanboy. <laughs> in which case, keep watching the video because you might like this game because you're a Halo fanboy hey, over a COD fanboy. But anyway, the equivalent to uh, challenges is assessments and all that does is you do a certain thing with that module like get this many kills using the stealth ability and then that unlocks what are <laughs> I'm just you unlock pro perks basically and now your module does multiple things instead of the original only intended thing it was for and goddamn that sounded redundant but it is five in the morning right now so cut me some slack please I'm trying to review a game that is mind-blowingly off the charts in both genres so please just stick with me here so the assessments are really cool um, please go into this game with an organized team or at least a friend or two because um, yeah it's fun to play but you might you're probably gonna get shot in the back like I mentioned a lot if you're not playing with the team and even if you are you are gonna get shot in the back but play with the team so you can do different strategies so you can do something like um, I don't know, do I want to equip my armor and run at this guy and run in and uh, face off with him in a gunfight? Or do I want to be that stealthy guy on the team who runs up and flanks the whole enemy team and stabs them in the back like a ninja? I mean, there are multiple roles you can play on the team which, with all these different armor abilities, which is why this is really a tactical shooter and not a running gunner. There is so much thinking and so many different moves you can make. There is no wrong move, which is what's kind of fun about this game. You can do so many different things to kill someone and just approach the map a different um, in different ways so if you like tactical shooters um, if you like the Halo franchise you might want to consider picking this up now should you buy this game that's what you're probably asking right now and really I can't make that decision for you but it totally depends um, like I said this isn't a cookie cutter first person shooter at all this kinda get branches off in different genres as itself <coughs> Oh god, excuse me. Like I said, it, it takes a lot from Halo and it takes a lot from Call of Duty. It puts them together and it does it quite elegantly. And uh, it looks beautiful while doing so and there's not a lot of lag, which is a great bonus on my side. I don't like playing with lag in any game. So you might want to consider picking this up. It is quite fun. Um, I'm going to be playing this for a while until Portal 2 comes out. Um, that game is going to take me by storm. But um, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. It was a lot of fun playing this game. I'm very freaking tired. And, uh, yeah, I hope this helped make your decision on whether or not to get Crisis 2 over something like Homefront, which just came out last week, actually. And, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed all of the gameplay. And, uh, here's my buddy Sweat picking up a nice final kill there while acquiring me two achievements. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay. Please like and favorite the video if you enjoyed this. And subscribe to me if you're new. And, uh, yeah, remain glorious, and I hope I see you on Crisis 2. Adios.